As we celebrate moms this month, let's not forget the mom of one of the most famous residents of Cincinnati, BB, Fiona's mother. Here to talk about BB and Fiona is Wendy Rice, head keeper of the Africa team at the Cincinnati Zoo and one of the members of Team Fiona who helped raise Fiona as a baby. Wendy, thanks so much for being with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm always happy to talk about Fiona. <laughs> uh, and, and aren't we all? Of course, you are there at the Hippo exhibit right now. But take us back to the very beginning, even before Fiona was born, when BB was expecting. This was going to be a, a special birth for the zoo and really for the hippo species. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So for us here at Cincinnati Zoo, we hadn't had hippos since the late 90s. So it was almost 20 years since we even had hippos on grounds. Um, and it was, I think, the 40s was the last time we had a hippo born at the Cincinnati Zoo. So yeah, it was historic and exciting for us on both ends, both milestones there. Um, when Bibi and Henry arrived, we put them together and they got along really well, very quickly. Um, they showed all of this great breeding behavior early on, and then one day it just stopped completely. And that's usually a pretty good indication that we got the job done and we could expect a baby. Um, so yeah, that was in the summer, and we started kind of watching the clock and anticipating a birth sometime around the spring of 2018 is what we were anticipating, or 2017, sorry. And of course, that birth happened in January instead of the spring. So the premature birth of a hippo is not necessarily something that you have a manual on. At least you didn't. I guess it exists now, but it didn't then. And as part of the Team Fiona Care team, you all had to act as surrogate mothers to really teach Fiona little things like being able to walk and get into the water and even breathing. I mean, this was, as we all watched and you were very transparent about it, a 24 hour job. Yeah, absolutely. There was a huge care team involved. I think one day when we added it up, we probably had over 30 or so professional animal care staff that were involved in Fiona's care. Um, and yeah, just like you said, it was 24 hour a day job. We had several schedules set up, keepers who spent the night with her. Um, and even the most basic things like breathing. Yeah, she really struggled with even that in the very beginning. Uh, we presumed her lungs were underdeveloped and hippos have this interesting dive reflex. So they spend so much of their lives in the water um, that they can even sleep in the water without waking up. They just naturally will bring their head up and breathe. Um, so they have this very ingrained dive response that, to hold their breath. And unfortunately for Fiona, that her lungs were not ready to start holding their breath, even though her instincts told her that that was something she should be practicing. Um, so yeah, we had to intervene in those moments when she was trying to do the breath holding and she would kind of get hypoxic, not have enough oxygen in her blood. Um, we had to put a little cannula on to get oxygen to her. And we found out that having that cannula inserted in her nostril kind of interrupted that dive response. So it helped in that regard. And then there's even this like really cool photo, I think, of our, our nursery keeper, Dawn Strasser, with Fiona laying on her chest. And it's just breathing, just having her lay on somebody and feel the rate of breath and hope that her body would recognize that and kind of match it. Um, in a big bloat, the babies would be on top of parents and uncles and aunties, and they'd be in with the mix and kind of experiencing life and learning from everything around them. But yeah, since Fiona wasn't strong enough to be in with mom during that time, we had to do our very best to try to... Uh, simulate what she would be experiencing if she could be parent raised. Well, and as you know, uh, as all all of us know, you were successful in doing that, and she grew up to be a very healthy hippo. But then she had to learn to be a hippo, and that's really where BB came in, especially BB and Henry. But BB was the one who really kicked in her maternal instincts. Was there any? question or any trepidation that maybe she wouldn't recognize Fiona as being her baby? Actually, yeah, there was a lot of concern on our end. Uh, there's a very important imprinting period that baby hippo spends with mom those first few weeks of life together. And since Fiona didn't get to have that time with Bibi, we weren't sure if Bibi would know whether Fiona was her daughter. Um, but we were very optimistic and hopeful because Bibi had spent time around babies before. So at her previous institutions, she had been in bloats where babies were around. So she got to be a big cousin or an older sister and things like that. So she did have experience with babies. Um, and we were, yeah, that was one of the scariest days of my career. 
when we decided that we were going to finally introduce them and, and see what happened. And all of our fears were totally unwarranted. Bibi's instincts kicked in. She was so fantastic with her. She was so gentle. Um, and Fiona, for her part, did a great job, too. Her instincts also kicked in, and she was able to read hippo body language, which was <laughs> like such a relief to us. Um, they interacted with each other appropriately. They got along great. Bibi was so gentle with her, and it was amazing. I think the first time they went out on exhibit together, um, and Bibi was kind of showing her the ropes and like led the way into the water and turned around and looked for her and waited for her to follow and things like that. Um, so, yeah, and honestly, to this day, no one can say for sure whether or not Bibi knows that Fiona is her baby, but Bibi has certainly always treated her like a baby and always um, interacted with her appropriately. And certainly acts very maternal um, in the majority of their interactions together. So all signs point to yes. <laughs> and, and quite the crowd. All right. Oh, look at there. <laughs> <laughs> I see a hippo nose. Yeah. And she says, you're talking about me. Yeah, always. we are. Yeah, always. <laughs> oh, it's good to see both of them. Yeah. That is awesome. And see Bibi's being a good mother, making sure that she's taking care of Fiona. That's good she to is. see. <laughs> she is the best mama. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Oh, that's very sweet. That's very sweet of Fiona to do that. But I remember there was uh, one very famous piece of video that Fiona was trying to cuddle up to Henry and Henry at that particular moment was not having anything of it. And BB stepped right in to protect Fiona. I remember that. Yeah. Henry, um, Henry was an older dad. Henry got into the dad game pretty, pretty late in life. And uh, I don't know that Henry had a lot of experience around babies and he was very much a little intimidated by her. And I think some of that is Fiona's personality. Fiona is just like in your face, bold, <laughs> curious, inquisitive, and super friendly and I can see how that could be a little overwhelming to an older gentleman hippo um but BB did such an amazing job of playing coach and referee so she kind of intervened as you said in that video she got, got between them and she would protect Fiona and let Henry know when his behavior wasn't appropriate and then she would also kind of demonstrate um, this is how we interact with the baby and this yeah. sort of interaction is okay and here's what's not um, so yeah, again, Bibi just stepped up to the plate and took over where keepers couldn't and did all the things that we couldn't do for Fiona. Basically taught her, here's how we live in a boat, here's how you interact with dad, um, and here's the cues that you need to pay attention to and back off. If, if Henry needed space, you better listen to it. He's a big guy. And uh, <laughs> he'll, he'll make you understand one way or another. Absolutely. Well, of course, Bibi uh, now is a, a single mom raising Fiona, you look at these two and how they have both beaten the odds uh, and what they have meant, not just for each other, obviously, but what they mean and what their survival means to the hippo species in general and just how important they are. Yeah, so Fiona specifically is incredibly valuable now to the hippo captive population that lives in the United States because as far as we know, Henry didn't have any other offspring. So Henry's lineage would have disappeared with him when he passed away, if not for Fiona. Um, so Fiona is carrying on his bloodline, which is now very, very much not represented in the population, which means that it's very likely she'll get a breeding recommendation in the future. And as we've seen with Fiona's story and so many other stories of animals that are under human care, they are such amazing ambassadors for their wild counterparts. Um, who knows how many people now say their favorite animal is a hippopotamus because of Fiona and because of the story. And we hope that people are then educated and start to learn and understand that hippos in the wild, for example, are poached for their ivory. They come in conflict with people in the wild um, for habitat space and, and they're incredibly territorial and dangerous. Um, but we just hope that, you know, through Fiona's story, people learn more, educate themselves and start to understand the impact that they have on the world around them. And then in that regard, Fiona is just doing more baby for hippos than arguably any other hippo on the planet at this point in time, uh, just bringing people's awareness and attention to their existence and, and what we can do um, to ensure that they have a place in the future. That's kind of her global uh, presentation and her global responsibility. But looking at the crowd behind you, I mean, what have these two meant to the Cincinnati Zoo? Oh, it's 
very, very hard to put it into words, honestly. Um, she has been such a huge part of our zoo family and our Cincinnati zoo community as well. Um, and I think that the most important thing is that, you know, Fiona's story gave us an opportunity to showcase everything that zoos can do well and zoos do right. And just showing you the absolute epitome of animal care. And when you have all of these people who, who are so dedicated and who are the best of the best in their field, working collaboratively on something like trying to raise Fiona so that she's become a healthy adult hippo. Um, I think it's a really good argument for the existence of zoos and, and the importance of zoos and the fact that we're not just keeping animals here just to entertain guests. Um, there's so much more to it. We've learned so much just from raising Fiona, even just from being able to milk baby and collect hippo milk and have a sample to know what's in hippo milk. We're always adding to our database of knowledge and all of that can be used to help their wild counterparts. Um, so I think in this day and age, especially where, you know, people are asking that question, like how, how do we justify zoos? How do you justify keeping animals under human care? I think that Fiona and Baby's story is such a beautiful example of when it's done right, this is what it looks like. And it, it's meant the world to our community. Um, it's meant the world to us all personally, everyone who's been a part of her life as well. And um, as a zookeeper, it is it is the pinnacle of my. I don't anticipate that anything else will ever top this experience for me personally. And I'm just so grateful to have been a part of it. Well, everybody from Team Fiona, uh, you just have been so amazing over the years to bring Fiona's story. And BB is doing her job as a great mother. And uh, as we celebrate moms, it's a great time to celebrate both BB and Fiona who are our guests. Oh yeah, along with Wendy Rice, the head keeper of the Africa team at the Cincinnati Zoo. And please give Fiona a scratch on the nose for me. She's my favorite. So thank you both. Thank you all three for being with thank us. Thank you. Take care. It was nice talking to you.